Professor Douglas Turgeson on this occasion, who's written a, an impressive work on um, Harold Lazar, which who is the topic for us today, so-called father of our field. That's a kind of mixed um, uh, observation for people in critical policy studies. But that's the point of Doug's book, is to try to suggest that he was a critical policy uh, analyst, uh, theorist, uh, say theorist. So Doug um, is Professor Emeritus of Politics at Trent um, University in Canada. That's sort of near Toronto, but uh, once you get to Toronto, you got three hours to go. <laughs> Frozen tundra. Um, he, there he was uh, director of um, the Administrative and Policy Studies Program, director of the Center for the Study of Theory, Culture, and Politics. Um, his publications um are fairly wide ranging but they include in particular um in addition to laswell which i guess doug's been working on since i met him probably in the 1970s in a restaurant i think in chicago where he tried to convince me that i should pay more attention to laswell whose book he found in a secondhand bookshop somewhere but he can tell us about that. But anyway, he, he wrote, a, edited an influential book with uh, Bob Pelkey called Managing Administrative State, which was an important book back then um, in the development of um, environmental politics. Also significant is his book on the promise of green politics, environmentalism, and the public sphere. Um, he's been a co-editor of the Handbook of Critical Policy Studies and also of the forthcoming Interpretive Policy Analysis book um, that we are doing. Sibylla is also a co-editor. Interpretive Policy Analysis, um, Meaning and Context, He's been an editor of uh, policy sciences. I remember back then, uh, he didn't want to do it, but we told him that if one of us had the chance to edit policy sciences, he had no uh, chance of turning it down. And he did this, and it was the one or two years, I forget how long, where the issues were really um, more interesting, the essays. Um, he has long... Um, work between um, political theory and public policy, which I would say is not uncommon to many people who are in the critical policy studies movement. Um, he began that work as a, as a student at Berkeley and finished uh, his PhD at the University of Toronto. Um, I think those are the main points. And um, I would uh, at this point turn it over to Doug. Hello. 
Here is the cover of the book we're going to discuss today, Policy Sciences of Harold Laswell, Contextual Orientation and the Critical Dimension. An important part of the uh, book's cover is it presents a striking photo portrait of Harold Laswell taken in 1935 when he was 33 years old. He was born in 1902 and died in 1978. So moving on now uh, to introduce our discussion of the book, we need to ask three questions. Who was Harold Laswell? Why was he important? Why has he been revived? The answer to none of those questions is especially easy. First, who was Harold Laswell? Harold Laswell was something of a legend in his own time, regarded by many as the outstanding political scientist of his day. He actually transcended the disciplines to such an extent that he has been called a one-man university. Raised by intellectually engaged parents in a small town, rural Illinois, he was nonetheless located a distance accessible to Chicago. Recognized as a prodigy while in high school, Laswell was afforded the opportunity of meeting with John Dewey, with whom he had an extended conversation in Chicago at the time. Dewey remained a central influence on Laswell throughout his career. Laswell attended the University of Chicago on a scholarship and in 1922 received a PhD, a special bachelor's research degree for which he concentrated on economics and philosophy. In 1926, he received his PhD in political science at Chicago under his mentor, Charles Merriam, who was recognized as the chief of the Chicago School of Political Science as it became famously known. Second, why was Laswell important? During his lifetime, sympathetic observers have maintained it was beyond doubt that Laswell was an omnipresence as the most original and eminent of political scientists. However, Laswell's importance went beyond his proposal for the policy sciences, which from the early 1950s on developed as the culmination of his life's work. During his lifetime, he attracted a substantial range of allies and followers, and he could foresee the policy sciences emerging as a central focus in the social sciences. That did not happen. But the emergence of scholars and institutions devoted to policy, the policy sciences, institutions such as the journal Policy Sciences, which he inspired, establish a legacy that has lasted, although diminished from before. Laswellians, both then and now, have been and are devoted students of Laswell's texts and ideas. This expertise makes Laswellians an important resource in understanding Laswell, but the book indicates that this is but one step in understanding Laswell and his importance. Why, third, has Laswell been revived? The very idea of revival implies that Laswell's influence has become, at best, moribund. Allies, followers, and critics alike have indeed noted a marked decline in Laswell's influence since his passing in 1978, and allies have spoken of his now neglected agenda. Similarly, there has been substantial concern among allies and followers that the sustainability of Laswell's policy sciences is tenuous, especially given generational change, as the number of those who have worked directly with Laswell or with Laswell's students diminishes. So why has Laswell been revived? It is certainly not the doing of Laswellians. In effect, they have instead expressed concern 
that the Laswellian movement itself is dying out. So the interest in reviving Laswell comes from elsewhere. There have been recent interests coming from different sources that appear unconnected. Yet a principal source of renewed interest is critical policy studies. That is the kind of interest in Laswell that informs the book. The shadow of old academic conflicts, especially in political science, haunts any effort, though, to come to terms with Laswell in a way that would help advance the agenda of critical policy studies. The strategy of the book is to set these conflicts aside as potentially misleading and thus circumvent distractions about Laswell as a person in order to grasp the implications and ramifications of his ideas. Clearly, Laswell's proposal for the policy sciences involves the most comprehensive framework for the policy field ever crafted. It presents a model addressing the full range of considerations pertinent to an effort to comprehensively apprehend and convey all the dimensions involved in orienting the social sciences to policy. Central to this framework is Laswell's remarkable focus on context. The key question then is this, what are the implications and ramifications of Laswell's idea of con context for the development of critical policy studies? That question leads us to focus on the importance of Laswell proposal for contextual orientation. Its ramifications open onto a critical dimension, which could be obscured by focusing on Laswell as a person. What we advance here by looking to Laswell's idea of contextual orientation is the conclusion that attention to this critical idea is pertinent to the development of critical policy studies. We also conclude that thought through the idea of contextual orientation leads not only to what Laswell called the policy sciences of democracy, but to the potential for the policy sciences of radical democracy. And uh, this is my uh, first uh, slide. Um, I understand you can see me and the slide as well, I hope. Um, so we must, as part of our study, expose ourselves to ourselves. Now that's what Laswell said in 1924. And doing so, he was summing up what he would later um, uh, name his contextual principle. The principle, that is, that is at the heart of his proposal for the policy sciences. The contextual principle found expression in what Laszlo later went on to uh, propose, which were projects of contextual mapping, con con collective as well as individual. These were to be used to enhance and render explicit what everyone shares. That is an at least implicit uh, image of self in context. Laswell's challenge to inquirers was to identify, question, revise, and develop that image as part of an explicit and enhanced contextual orientation. The focus of this book is on working out the implications of the contextual principle. That is to say, of the idea of the contextual principle. The reason for saying this is to avoid any misunderstanding of this point, that the book's focus is on the ramifications of that idea. The focus is not on what Ladwell may or may not have personally experienced. The focus is not about what he intended or what moved him. The point is to unpack the implications of the idea. So here the whole question of Laszlo's intentions though not entirely ignored, is distinctly marginalized. My approach here is an adaptation of the Frankfurt School's method of imminent critique. Another way of saying this is the book is not a biography. In fact, 
It is pretty much the opposite of a biography or intellectual biography for which a consideration of Laszlo's personal feelings and inclinations would be indispensable, even inescapable. I wrote the book documenting many important yet obscure details in hope that they might be helpful to a potential biographer or biographers. In fact, Andrew Willard, uh, an amiable Laswellian uh, who did much to help shape this book, uh, he and I are in fact looking for someone who might be able to uh, write such a book. So that's the, uh, the basic thing I have to say about the book. Uh, but beyond that, the book has a hero uh, who is not Laswell. And I don't know whether this will be familiar, every, this is obvious to everyone or not. Um, uh, do I need to, anyhow, her, the name of this uh, hero is Polly Murray. Uh, has, has anybody heard that name? Okay, that means you haven't read the last chapter. Uh, so <laughs> anyhow, uh, the uh, Polly Murray uh, is an extremely important figure, uh, but extremely unknown. Uh, for those who have, have access to Amazon Prime, which is the only way you can see this film, it's called My Name is Polly Murray. So the basic point about her in this context uh, has to do with the book the sharing of power in a psychiatric hospital, which I use as demonstrating a, a bottom-up potential in Laswell. However, that potential, if you look at Polly Murray, whom he undoubtedly was aware was at at uh, at Yale while uh, while he was there, uh, she was doing her doctorate. Uh, that the for Polly Murray, Laswell would be not fulfilling what he should where what he should do. Uh, that is to say, Laswell said, "What happens with this bottom up uh, upsurge of social movements is a change in attitudes." Well, Polly Murray would say, "No, we what well, we want a change in attitudes, but we also want a change in the law." We want a change in policy. She was a lawyer, and she was one of the most important lawyers of the time, uh, though she is very much unknown. So that is the direction I see the book uh, going in, and it relates to the question of democracy. Uh, the threat of authoritarian populism, I argue in the book, means there is no, there is a necessary commitment in principle to democracy for all forms of poly policy research. The book is also about the past and the future. And in that sense, uh, Laswell's idea of the developmental construct, which we can discuss, uh, which is a key aspect of contextual orientation, structures the book, including the Marx-inspired idea of the present as history. So this leads us into thinking about how, uh, about the relationship, I would suggest, between theory and practice, which is a complicated topic that the book takes up. But essentially, for Laswell, theory and practice were, were supposed to be united, and he took this uh, inspiration both from Marx and pragmatism. So for my second slide, just briefly, uh, emergence. Uh, the four these are the four phases I present in the book of Laswell's development. Uh, the manifest Laswell is particularly significant in phase two, political psychiatry. Uh, but there is also a move from elitism to, to his democratic turn, as indicated in the uh, next. Uh, phases, particularly the science of democracy uh, in 1940 to 1948. So I just wanted to put out, I'm not going to go in and, and explain this, but if you've looked at the book, 
uh, you'll see this will be familiar, and that really structures my argument. Finally, my the last uh, the last slide is I'm particularly putting this up here to see this uh, photo of Laswell, which was taken in 1935. Uh, and one reason I felt this was convenient for the book is 1935 was also the year in which he published his most important book, which was World Politics and Personal Insecurity, which of course uh, drew attention to both the broad scope of world politics and the intimate uh, uh, realm of personal insecurity. Uh, this was part of his political psychiatry phase, but also this book places an emphasis on an act of creative orientation to context. Laswell, in other words, sees creativity as needed in enhancing contextual orientation. And in this book, he emphasizes the open-ended nature of contextual orientation as a process and a practice. So I'm open to questions or what responses. Or I'd, I'd begin. I'd begin by saying that I, I was never convinced. Um, I told this Doug many times. Uh, I think there, Doug would say, agree with this, that there are two Laswells, but in my view, it suggests that he didn't actually understand himself in the phrase, know yourself. Because on the one hand, we have the man who was the behavioral political scientist, strong figure in promoting a, a form of positivism. And then we have, on the other hand, the man who uh, promotes the policy sciences of democracy which is Doug's focus. Um, and he clearly shows that there are, Doug clearly shows that there are important elements there that can draw this on. But for me, he was never saw or was never willing to figure out how to connect these two. They stand apart. And this is the conflict for me. I think that the people who find him at, uh, elitist, like James Farr, have as strong an argument as those who find him as um, Democrat. Um, they point to the behavioral thing, but also to his work with the military, the pictures of him standing there with General Eisenhower. And I always thought that he was a guy that wanted to be everything uh, to everybody. He was a kind of Renaissance man, no doubt about this. Um, but in doing that, he left a lot of threads, um, loose threads. Uh, Rosanna. Can I respond or somebody else want to respond? Well, uh, well let's, just, have, let's have the uh, discussions first. Yeah, well, just, just briefly, I would just say that uh, that's the reason why I'm trying to get someone to write a biography. That now, would those, depend on who wrote the biography. Considerations that are important to a biography not my book. My book is an imminent critique. It doesn't matter what Laszlo thought, what he felt. What matters are the implications of the idea. Right. For your book, and, but not for those of us who are interested in Laszlo as a figure in the field. Not for those who are please, interested please. in the, not, not for those who are interested in biography. That is the task of a biography. It's not the task of what I did, which was no, trying no, to- No, I'm not criticizing you. What you did is okay. But I'm talking, the idea is that we're going to talk not just about your book, but about Laswell as well. And the book is a springboard for the general yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About and I, and, and I, uh, I could see, I could see, I hope uh, more than one biography is written, and that's, I want to, it's a tragedy, I think, that there's not a good biography of Laswell. Uh, but we could get uh, uh, different biographies giving different interpretations of Laswell. Uh, right. But, I just, I'm a discussant, and I offered my interpretation. Philippe, right. or Rosanna, okay. or Sibylla. So, uh, um, thank you. Thank okay. you, 
Uh, is it okay? You 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 hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, thanks. So I'm I'm a little sorry because we 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 have not the opportunity to read the book, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but I hope we will have, and I'm sure it will be very interesting. So maybe um, what is a, a little complex with Laswell is, uh, as you mentioned, there is a lot of faith. There is, it's it's a curious man, uh, and who have a lot of influence, uh, and uh, and I think it's something that uh, very interesting to observe. So I saw a kind of fascination, specifically in US, about Laswell more than everywhere. Uh, what is what I would like to ask you is to um, because so I understand your idea that the question is not to speak about Laswell about his idea but if we want to speak about the idea we need to speak about the different book. Uh, there is no. Uh, do you think that there is a major book of Laswell? I mean that the policy science is a collective book when we have made an introduction. Uh, there is one. Uh, my impression is my, one of the best. Most important book was the book was you written first before the the Second World War with uh, um, in 1936, 1935 about propaganda about politics, and also the one with Kaplan, uh, which what I think is is probably a major book. But I I would like to to have your your view about this because if we want to discuss about to go out of this ambiguity of last word, which I totally agree with Frank, because for me it's it's a, it's it's a complex guy uh, I, 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 with different face. Something was interesting. I, I I'm interested by the book of with Kaplan for with Kaplan Kaplan. I don't know how you say Kaplan, that. Yes. Uh, uh, but it's very a pragmatist book uh, because Kaplan was really pragmatist with the influence of Dewey. And there is some book I, I have. Um, I saw a, 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 an article when he answered to uh, um, in a debate when he said, "Well, science is something more strong." So contextual, it, it, you you focus on the contextual, but it's probably the context is not enough to 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 go in critical. So I would like to hear about you about what for you uh, uh, what is the major return of Laswell. Uh, in in his different part of his life to really understand what he would like to say more than who we are. I, okay, but we don't need to know who we are. But if we want to discuss about his ID, we need to discuss about his book or his article. What you consider about this? Let's take comments Maybe. first from the others. Otherwise, they'll yeah. we'll run out of time for them. Rosanna? Yeah, uh, so... Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity to listen to you, Doug. Uh, I already know some parts of the of your book because you sent to me, and uh, and so I I'd like to talk about the importance of talking to Lasso again about Lasso again, you know, and uh, and so what does it mean uh, for us in critical policy studies you know, to say that Lasso has a critical dimension? No, um, it's important for what? Uh, personally, I think that uh, the most important features in the field comes from the this bifurcation, no? this kind of a double sense or double activity in Laswell's agenda, as uh, Philippe uh, uh, brought to the fore uh, some uh, some years ago. But I think that it's special uh, with regard to his incomplete uh, discussion on democracy and especially on values, you no? Know? But what do you think about this? It is important for us in this moment to discuss uh, Lasso because we can see other things that you cannot uh, uh, see before. What is exactly, what we can gain in terms of discussion for critical policy studies, we can see the the, the crisis in the, in, for example, in the uh, policy field. Looking again, looking back to to Lasso, what what is exactly the contribution? I know, but I'd like to because I read your book, but I'd like to to hear from you this. Thank you. Thank so you maybe Rosa. there is a new okay. agenda about Lasso. Yeah. Well, no? yeah. Are there others, or 
Yeah, Sibylle. Yeah, it's, it's me actually, um, because, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me on this Zoom meeting. Um, luckily, I had a chance to read uh, the book beforehand, so I'm maybe going to um, introduce some more context, as it were, um, for those who didn't have a chance to read it. So I, I enjoyed uh, when Frank said how Doug has been trying to convince him uh, to pay more attention to Leswell for decades, basically. And I was trying uh, mm -hmm. to reconstruct uh, what I know about Harold Leswell um, as someone who was trained as a political scientist in the 90s, if it wasn't for Doug, for instance, or other members of the critical policy studies community. And uh, to be honest, um, it wouldn't be very much. I would probably know that he's the founding father of policy studies, um, uh, his famous notions of politics, who gets what, when and how, and perhaps also uh, his um, his idea of the policy process as uh, this chain of uh, log logical phases. So um, uh, having said that, uh, the most things I know about uh, Leswell, um, I know from this kind of critical perspective perspective. And nevertheless, I think um, I learned a lot of things in reading uh, Doug's recent book, and I would uh, like to highlight two aspects that I liked in particular. Maybe to pick up uh, what, um, what Doug mentioned earlier, it's not an autobiography, and he doesn't uh, necessarily follow these different phases uh, of Les Wills, uh work that uh, were already published in 1950 by David Easton and um, uh, this article about how there are two phases in Laswell's thinking about values in relation to a democratic community. So like Doug just stressed, um, instead he takes this um, approach uh, where he uh, distinguishes between a latent and a manifest uh, Laswell, something I liked a lot, and how this uh, letter is conceived then as the critical Laswell. And um, key to recognizing uh, the critical Laswell is his concept of contextual orientation. And um, I would like to focus first on this contextual orientation because um, it was a bit of an eye opener for me and second on um, the role of symbols because like uh, Doug already mentioned, um, what he proposes in his book is a kind of imminent um, critique. So um, he uh, kind of uh, approaches Laswell with his own weapons, as it were. So first of all, by mapping the emerging trajectory um, of Laswell's work through changing cultural and historical contexts. And uh, secondly, by questioning the symbols um, that Leswell deploys in naming and framing policy sciences. So um, I like this approach uh, of an imminent critique because I think um, what becomes uh, very clear is uh, how Doug is able to reconstruct these very various influences um, for an author that has been called as highly um, eclecticistic. So um, talking about this uh, contextual orientation um, and uh, Doug already started his presentation with this quote, um, this call upon inquirers to expose themselves to themselves. And um, I found this really striking because um, um, I'm under the impression that at least in my field of studies, that is maybe interpretive policy analysis of migration policy making in a European context. Um, when we talk about context, we, we very often treat it as the background of our object of study. So we analyze meaning making in context, we analyze interpretations arising from lived experience in different contexts of organizations, polities, communities. Um, we try to understand, we, try, uh, we attempt at verstehen um, to make clear people's interpretations of their own and others' experience in certain contexts leading to context-specific meanings. And I'm very much aware that um, I'm not doing justice at all to all those colleagues who have written about positionality and reflexivity, but um, at least in, in my field of study, um, 
it seems to me as if this context orientation is always understood as there's the context uh, for what we observe in terms of meaning making out there rather than um, asking about uh, our own context or making our own context transparent. For instance, um, in this field of uh, migration policy studies, uh, there has been a kind of reflexive turn that has been around for maybe 15 years and not much longer, where colleagues um, try to scrutinize our own knowledge production, how knowledge on, um, on migration produces a kind of methodological uh, nationalism, how knowledge is produced, circulated, uh, utilized um, by policymakers, etc. So I was a bit uh, humbled uh, to, to learn um, that this notion of reflexivity has been around for uh, 100 years, as we have just uh, seen on Doug's slide. And um, secondly, and I'm going to conclude with that uh, short observation, um, I also very much liked how, um, how Doug draws uh, from symbols, given that uh, symbols were so important to Laswell, um, with his understanding of symbols being whatever has meaning or significance in any sense. And just like with context, it seems to me that um, in our own empirical work, we try to detect symbols or interpret them uh, in our object or subject of study. And I really like this twist where um, Doug suggests addressing Leswell's own framework, not as a theoretical concept, that is then very coherent, um, uh, very consistent, et cetera, but uh, to treat this own very particular style of Leswell as a kind of symbolism in itself. So I really enjoyed that. Thank you. I want to take just one quick privilege before we turn to Doug and say that it's not surprising that somebody who studied in the 1990s didn't know much about Laswell because somebody who studied in the US in the 1970s didn't know anything about Laswell. Laswell, even though he became a president of the Political Science Association, disappeared from political science. Mm -hmm. He was a kind of footnote, but nobody talked about him. So when he came back uh, with a kind of surge of the policy studies uh, field. I also had a chance to read the whole books and that's why I'm a bit, uh, you know, have a very strong feeling to uh, share, to discuss with you today as the author of the book. I think it's very important and it's mean a lot to the critical policy communities when you say that the founder of the, the, of the field also focus on critical and interpretive orientation of policy studies. I think that, you know, uh, for us, can endorse and legitimize the way that we are trying to do uh, to promote the critical and interpretive policy studies and analysis. And uh, with that, uh, you all already show uh, how he promote the radical democracy, how he engage with the symbol and interpretive methods. I think it's uh, very important. And with that, uh, it's mean, uh, it is the time that we can chip from the fling of the field to the center of the field by tracing back and uh, reframe the way that we're talking about critical. It's not just happen, but actually it's uh, start from the beginning, very beginning. And it is the, the part of the DNA of the founder of the, of the field. Yeah. That's what I feel. Yes, but um, I would say um, that this is a, what Doug's done is extremely important in just this regard because the Laswell orientation grounded in the policy sciences journal is the more or less, more I would say, the non-critical policy studies orientation. But what Doug shows is that we have an opportunity to build out from that other Laswell. So that's a really significant, important significance, I think, of this book. Professor Torgerson, would you like to reply? Yes. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thanks for all these comments. I, I can't, can't say that I can hold them all within my brain, uh, but uh, I appreciate them. 
the thing about Laswell, I would say, is that there is a critical dimension to Laswell. And I wouldn't say that Laswell was altogether critical. There was a critical dimension to Laswell. We can, we can perceive a critical Laswell. And that's, the, and that's the Laswell that's emerging, whether he's aware of it or not. And what, the, what that shows us is the logic of the argument is, is what's important. Uh, whether Laswell understood it or not doesn't really matter for us, because we can see that whatever his intention was, he was propelled in a direction of radical democracy. Once, once he started, started along, that line, along that line, you can't stop conceptually. And that, so that's the basic point I'm trying to make, is that Laswell for us is not the Laswell who might have said this or that said that, who did his marathon uh, uh, talk, which I think Frank has once said to me, is he never, people who talk like that on and on and on are all about themselves. And so uh, we're suspicious of Laswell in that respect. I, I've got to, you know, I would be interested in different biographies, but for us, we don't need a biography first. We just need to be able to see where the logic of the contextual principle takes us. That's not entirely the case, I would say, Doug, because we are in a sort of battle with the other Laswell, the, the other people who say they own Laswell, the policy, science, journal, movement, and so forth. Well, I take your I, point, though. Well, the thing is that I got, you know, I, you know, people said I knew a lot about Laswell before I started this book. I knew nothing. And what I really learned a lot with was engaging with Laswellians who knew the thing backwards, knew Laswell backwards and forward, and I had to reread Laswell and learn it as well as they did, and I hope better. Uh, but anyhow, Laswell is, um, I think, uh, could be important to how we see what we're doing in critical policy studies. And I wish you would also well, I mention that. That, that there are... Uh -huh. Go ahead. I probably said enough. Pascal, Thomas, Olga, do you want to add anything? Feel free if you do. Rosanna? So, no, I, I'd like to highlight one thing, Douglas. Uh, the fact that uh, you, after so many years, though insist in, in uh, Lasso, you really managed to, to place Lasso as object of a new agenda. Uh, I I can see perfectly that there is a new agenda on Lasso. There are new books, articles, uh, new researchers, uh, new scholars interested in in Lasso, uh, and exactly try to to clear the dust <laughs> on Lasso, no, over Lasso, uh, see new aspects, research into his other less obvious influences, and uh, he, for me, this seems fantastic, uh, because as Elao said in 1999, I think, there was a negle ne um, neglect neglected agenda no, on Lasso, and, and now the, uh, the 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 scene has changed because there are a lot of people who started to to talk about Lasso again and try to explain and that was my question to you, you know, why it's important to look back to the beginnings of the policy uh, uh, fields and look again Lasso you no know? and uh, now you come to you no know, you bring to us this with a very uh, great deep uh, discussion uh, about the critical dimension on Lasso, um, but uh, trying to discuss more specifically uh, about the context. No, that means if we look at the context, we can see other things on Lasso. But the fact is, for many years. 
when scholars look to scholars look to Lasso, they cannot see the this contextual dimension, the, this contextual implication, and so Lasso was considered for many as a very mainstream uh, scholar of mainstream uh, researcher. What do you think about this? Now, we do you think that we are facing a, a new agenda on Lasso? And this is really, it's part of you, it's because of you. But uh, how, how, how uh, can, you, can you see this new agenda? No, there is this new agenda. And if there is this new agenda for you, what does it mean? Well, Sibylla had her hand up at the same time, so let's so maybe jump Doc in. Maybe can answer I'll, first. I'll, I'll and forget what I'm going to say. <laughs> can I just, I, I, one thing, I, I, I had to laugh when, almost had to laugh when Frank said that uh, I kept on trying to get him to pay more attention to Laswell. Well, he's the one who kept on, kept after me wanting to put, wanting to publish, wanting me to publish things on Laswell all the time. And this book would not exist if it weren't for Frank, because he's the guy who got me to write it. So thank you, Frank. Well, uh, I, wanted, I wanted you to prove to me that I should take him seriously. Well, uh, did. I, would say, I would say you don't have to take him seriously. Take his ideas seriously. And well, that's, I, I have a different view of that, but that's, that's okay. There's much in your book that's actually historical. It's not... You, it's true that you're focusing on developing this logic of the context, but the reader, potential reader, should know that there's a lot of history in there. It's not a history yes. book, but there's a lot about the background yeah. and the man. Sibylla. Yeah, I, it was was interesting uh, to become an historian, really, right, writing this book. It, uh, it was- uh, Well, you were an intellectual historian. Was that? I'm sorry. It was a work in intellectual history. Yes, yes. I agree. Sibylla. But, Doug, maybe you want to answer Rosanna's question first. What about a future agenda? Oh, uh, a future agenda. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, well, the thing is that the, the last chapter is called uh, Laswell and the Critical Agenda. So I would say that the critical agenda already exists. Uh, what the what the thing is? What is the relationship of Laswell to that agenda? Is the argument of the final chapter, and Polly Murray becomes a very important figure in that respect, because she's she really radical. She thought through uh, Polly Murray really radicalizes Laswell's thinking. Um, yeah, I. I, I also wanted to return to this. Uh, historical perspective, because what I found really interesting uh, in, in your book uh, were some uh, some aspects where I felt, uh, well, maybe it's not history repeating itself, but uh, some observations of the historical context that really resonated. Um, uh, the one thing being this age of global insecurity, and uh, the second, um, a discussion where you talk about the death of political theory, at least um, uh, in a German academic context, uh, that is something that we can observe firsthand with a lot of uh, uh, chairs of political theory being turned into some more empirical uh, professorships. But um, I wanted to ask a question because you said uh, when you started your research for this book, you realized how little you knew about uh, Laswell. Is there anything in particular where from the point of view today, uh, you would criticize your own writing on Laswell or certain um, perspectives that have changed over the course of writing this book? Uh, I don't know, I'm too close to it, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, the um, criticize my own approach. Um, I, I, well, I would say, Doug, your, your statement that you didn't know much about him was very modest because, in fact, you've been focusing on him for a long time. I, I know, but I, 
I didn't, you know, there were, there were things that I frankly hadn't read and things I hadn't read well enough. And uh, pro going back into it, uh, things opened up in a way that I just would not have imagined. And also dealing with Laswellians directly about what I was writing uh, was a big eye opener. They, there was a lot of resistance, particularly on the part of Andrew Wernick, I mean, excuse me, Andrew Willard, uh, and uh, but he came around. He came around fi fi one step at a time, but finally he he, he grasped it. And uh, you, uh, need, you need to clarify that he's one of the Laswell gatekeepers uh, for policy I, sciences. Uh, I suppose uh, the uh, there will be a, a symposium in um, in uh, in policy sciences where uh, where so Bill Asher will be one of the discussants. A number of others. Far will be a discussant. Uh, so we'll see how things <laughs> go when I do that. Uh, they'll they'll write something. I'll write a response. Well, those guys, I mean, they have a Laswell Society. Yes, Society of Policy Sciences. Huh? Yeah. yeah but I mean, independent of the of the journal. Well, the, 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 the journal is published by the Society of Policy Sciences. Okay. Yeah. Philippe, Pierpong, Pascal, Olga. What comes to mind? Uh, Anyhow, what do I you think I... about the, the the book of of William Dunn was more or less about this, the 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 begin of the, the Laswell understanding of pragmatism? What is the how you link uh, how you read this book? Yes, well, uh, the, the phase one intelligent social order uh, is in Laswell's development is the Deweyan phase. Uh, Dewey is a major influence on Laswell early on. Uh, Laswell, in fact, uh, met Dewey when he was in high school uh, for a, an extended discussion. Uh, it was prearranged. And uh, when he was a graduate student at the University of Chicago, uh, Dewey was no longer there, but he would sometimes come and stay at the house of uh, George Herbert Mead, where Laswell would meet him there. So. He was well acquainted with uh, Dewey and Dewey's work, and uh, and th this is under the pragmatist event dimension is understated by far, I believe, and uh, but I think that uh, uh, it's uh, it can be it can be seen if you look more carefully at the first phase, but that definitely Laswell there was a, a strong pragmatist dimension to it. Um, one writer I forget his name he died recently, uh, emphasized pragmat the role of pragmatism. But I think pragmatism is just one influence on Laswell. More, far more important are uh, Freud and Marx. That it was done, that Philippe was mentioning, who just died. Well, say something about why uh, his colleagues at the University of Chicago refused to give him tenure. I think this had something to do with his Pragmatic, they didn't no, he, 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 he had tenure at the University of Chicago. He did not, he was not promoted to full professor. That was the problem. And the problem was the president of the university thought he was a dangerous man, uh, a danger to democracy. And that was the reason, I forget his name, but he's the guy who established the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions in California. I can't remember his name. What was, it, what, what was his argument? Why was he a danger to democracy? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't know, but I, I, I just, I, I came across a letter once from him to Laswell said, "You are a dangerous man." <laughs> so, yeah, but there is another thing, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, dude. Uh, because, yeah, I think uh, I, I don't know exactly the story, but one thing is sure, and I, you can find in in the, in the Almond article about the end of the Chicago School of Political Science. I mean that mm -hmm. all the people coming from Maryam was out at the University of Chicago after the Second World War. And, and, the, and the, it's not only Laswell. 
Uh, and I think it's also something interesting is the link between Laswell, Miriam, what we call the Chicago School of Political Science. And uh, I understand that there is like a, some philosopher who arrive in the, in, um, in the Chicago School who, who want to come back about, I don't remember the name of the guy, who play a very important influence to, to go out all this old generation of Miriam students. And uh, it's not only personal, I understand, but I don't know. I, have not the, I don't know if you have the real story, but I think there is a context also, not yes, <laughs> to come back is, on the context to all the motion. Yeah, uh, there, are, uh, there, yeah. Are, uh, there are a couple of figures that are, were important, uh, but the most famous, of course, uh, was uh, Herbert Simon. Uh, and that mm -hmm. was... Uh, right. And and that was the that's where the pragmatism comes in with regard to Laswell. Uh, I I wrote to Herbert Simon uh, once upon a time, and I said, "What about uh, the, your relationship to Laswell and 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 uh, and pragmatism?" And he said, "I read all that stuff, but I I became more interested in uh, in in, in uh, the more formalism of uh, of uh, logical positive positivism, and particularly Carnap." So um, that so so we see in uh, in Simon, who I think is really an extraordinary thinker, uh, but he need to read him through really imminent critique. Uh, but uh, Herbert Simon is a, a, a major figure coming out of this, but he's also one with whom you can contrast Laswell, because Herbert Simon is the technocrat. He is the most sophisticated technocrat, I think. Uh, there ever was, and uh, and uh, and Laswell uh, re resisted that approach. Thomas always has a question. What comes to mind, Thomas? I don't mean to put. If you don't have one, it's okay. No, sorry. I'm I'm just I'm just listening curiously, and but I don't have a question at the moment. Thanks. Um, no, no, please. Um, I, I have another question uh, with regards to pragmatism. Um, does either of you um, have any idea of why uh, this uh, um, overall pragmatist approach is so highly neglected in policy uh, analysis, analysis these days? Um, I mean, you mentioned some things of uh, Simon... <laughs> changing tracks, et cetera, but uh, speaking more generally, because I mean, you, you Doug, you make an effort uh, of tracing uh, these connections to Dewey in, in your book, but um, I mean, there, there must have been more and in, in other disciplines plays such an important role until today. Why is that? Well, yeah. Um, just for me, could you just repeat your question just, just briefly? I was wondering why pragmatism doesn't play as big as a role as it. Oh yes, yes. Well, the, I, I believe what what happened in the in the development of American political science was a shift away from pragmatism towards positivism, and that or at least a vague positivism, and that and that occurred uh, in the uh, post war period uh, when, uh, well, actually around nineteen seventy, I think was the. Uh, is that about, about the right time? I think, yeah. But see, right. um, I would argue that Laswell was also, the other Laswell was part of the guy who was pushing behavioralism, which became part of that movement. But when we come to pragmatism, we can turn to Philippe, who wanted to add something. Philippe? No, no. I, 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 just, I just think that there is uh, uh, there is an end of the pragmatism around the, the 1915 with uh, the new movement of positivism. Even from Laswell, uh, there is a very I can put also on the a very interesting debate organized in 1945 with um, uh, what is the name of the guy? It's uh, between Laswell, Simon, and. Um, a guy, the, the name is, uh, sorry, I will find, uh, Peris, uh, about the role of the discourse and the cementing in the political science. 
Uh, I recommend this discussion between all and and you see that after the the the, the game theory and the book of of Newman and there is like a, a, a temptation I think that positivists can offer a, a, a new way of democracy a new way of and all these pragmatists disappear I think during 30, 30 years uh, and this is how I understand it it's uh, there is like a, a paradigm or, or framework who change after the Second World War. And even Laswell contribute to this change. Even Simon. Uh, it's Who's curious third, and paradoxical. Third the third name? Uh, Paris. I can give you also some... Um, um, it's a very interesting debate. Let me give you on the... It's a, are, can, yes. if I could just, are you speaking of semantics of political science uh, in the American Political Science Review of 1950? Let me, it's a discussion of a book hear. on language and politics or something like that. Anybody else want to jump in here while we're well I about, about that debate, uh the two the two key figures there are in, in American Political Science Review 1950, semantics of political science, are Laswell and Simon. And you can see the mm -hmm. contrast between the two really stand out uh, in that. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I think uh, you are rescuing Simon. Simon was said mm -hmm. to be a very difficult man by his friends. And one problem is he never stopped talking. <laughs> drove a number of people crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why he produced so many things, no? a lot of books. I mean, that's not unusual so, to but, academics. Rosanna. So, Doug, uh, if I, I'd like to insist in this idea of agenda because. Uh, uh, we here have, have uh, mentioned uh, different works about Laswell, no? And uh, each one with a different way to interpret Laswell. So if you talk about a new agenda, if you take in consideration the last 10 years, for example, no? With your book, uh, the Dan's book and the other, the Philip's book. And uh, so we could say that there are two or three directions of research in this agenda, that means one is criticism, no? And I think that you are uh, heading uh, this direction, no? That are, there are a, another one on pragmatism, and maybe Dan is another, you no, know, a good uh, leader in this direction. And maybe another one about democracy, uh, because there are other uh, articles that are discussing uh, if uh, democracy was a central value on Lasso. Because th there is a, a good question for me uh, about uh, uh, the Lasso work that is, um, when you talk, when, when he talked about values, for example, you know, uh, where these values were produced? Outside of the policy, that means in the politics or inside of the policy. I think that maybe the, if you took in consideration the values, the question of values that was central in his work, and you take this as a category of analysis, we could organize his production in three or four different phases according to uh, the meaning that he is giving uh, to the the notion uh, of value, values, you no, know? and um, and so I'm insisting in this because I I'm trying to to organize a kind of overview about the current production about Lasso. I think that we can maybe map this and uh, try to 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 give more consistency to to this new agenda to not lose again and again you know, this discussion, and so we need to. Uh, retake this agenda, uh, retook, uh, retake this agenda, I don't know, uh, 
five or six years after this moment here. So I think that we could, uh, all of us are more or less interested in less so, no? And so maybe we could try to organize, organize or just to reflect about, uh, about this, what we are producing, what are the best direction or the main direction in this moment? Well, I, well, I, I, I think I would just say that I, I would just say that uh, uh, that's the question that I hope the book opens up. I leave the, that the answer to that question to other people. I mean, I will I would engage with it, but uh, uh, that's the point that the you're right. That's where the book goes, and that's where you're asking the right question. But uh, I haven't written that book yet. Uh, well, I think R Rosanna was making a, a plea for the rest of us. Uh, I wanted to make a, an additional point about the relevance of his interest in um, democracy uh, early on in the fascist period that he experienced in Europe, um, extending Sibylla's point about the relevance. We are now in a period where authoritarianism and some form of neo-fascism has returned, making the question ever more important. Well, that is the that is the reason why I argue uh, that a that one cannot take for granted the uh, the, the liberal democratic context of uh, of uh, policy work, uh, and in fact people on this panel who live in authoritarian countries uh, and uh, but in the others who live in liberal democratic countries uh, but we can't take liberal democracy for granted uh, so that changes our um, agenda that we have to figure out how to how to protect dem liberal democracy uh, from the authoritarian threat because without liberal democracy there's <laughs> There's no chance for democracy, you know. That, that's I'm not, I'm not saying the liberal democracy is the, the the end is the best form, but it's uh, it contains the uh, uh, best we got. Yeah, the mm -hmm. best we got, and and it's certainly to, to thwart the authoritarian threat, uh, because the authoritarian threat is a threat to all forms of policy research. Because, as, as Laszlo said, democracy thrives on knowledge. Authoritarianism thrives on ignorance. But, but Philippe wants to say something, but I'm not sure I would yeah. quite uh, put it that way. Because policy yeah, I don't think... research can actually be quite functional and serve uh, Russia as well as a future, a more democratic version. Philippe. Yeah. No, uh, two things. So the first one about the question of Rosanna. Uh, I identify in my mind at least three different ways that as well use the concept of value, totally different epistemologic view. I mean that in the book of the politics, how, when, and how, it is very Weberian conception of value, where value is observed as neutral perspective to understand the conflict about value. And, uh, and and we don't forget that the question, the main question of the of Laswell at this moment, the very structuralist question is how power use value to maintain it in its place. When you see the book with Kaplan, uh, it's very uh, um, it's a very uh, Dewey concept of value. Uh, it's a concept of valuation you speak about. Uh, it's how there is a building of the value. And when you see policy science, and uh, 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 there is no question about how people use value. There is democracy, which is uh, uh, the, the beginning of the end of everything for what sa policy science needs to do without question about political value. So I think there is, a, I, and I think it's probably as well as someone who is really absorb a lot of things around him. But my impression first is really about this. And second, about the, the question you evoke. Uh, you know, it's interesting to, to observe that what Seduk for me is what believe Laswell in during the Second World War. And when it changed, it say, oh, finally, a good policy with good knowledge 
uh, stabilized democracy. And we know that now it's false uh, in the sense that uh, since w- I remember when we were in Singapore, Singapore would like to say how that we can do a wonderful policy with a wonderful result better than any democracy, and we are not democracy. So the link between the performance and the knowledge about public policy and democracy is is considered by uh, uh, the last well of 1945 as something obvious, which is not the case in the last well of 1935, because when there is a, the, probably also the context of, of Nazism who, who go out and, and propaganda and you understand how the value is a play. And uh, and I think we, we it's interesting to observe as well in how we reflect part of this period. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't I know. We're, exactly. up over the, we're over our time. Right. We could take another question or two, and Doug can certainly have a final word. Anybody else want to offer something at this moment? Uh, just wondering uh, why the DNA of the last well from the critical site has been uh, lost in uh, translation for so long until you you found it. I mean, why a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, he has a very important uh, uh, words and a lot of people read his work, but end up with uh, technocracy, uh, technocratic orientation. Why? Why? I mean, critical side has been locked in translation. So you're you're interested in, in why last what formulate that question again? Why last well? Why why no one see the critical side of last well until you found it? I mean, well, a lot of people um, read his work and you know end up with the techno case. I, I should say that, I should say that John Dreisick also saw saw this critical side to last well. Around the same time that I did, we uh, I'm sure we we came up with it uh, independently of one another, uh, but uh, he certainly saw the same thing. Uh, and uh, but why has that not been more broadly uh, seen? Well, I would say simply because of all the uh, thing things about Laswell as a person. Again, that's the point. Laswell as a person, the the whole battles in political science and. Uh, people, one camp versus another camp, you can't see Laswell seriously if you're bound up in that. I mean, that's to say, you can't see Laswell's ideas if you're bound up in that. And so the, the crit- so it's, it's that, I would say that's that battle uh, that uh, people want to argue about, La- uh, the, you know, the corpse of, uh, of Laswell. Uh, the, I'm more interested in the body of his work. Well, it's also true that um, political science, as Sibylla noted, um, has gone more uh, quantitative, empirical, rational choice, and that plays into the other side of um, Laswell. They're just not interested in, in, in that. Well, Las- Laswell had, those things were of marginal interest to Laswell. No, I'm talking about, the question was, why did other people not pick him up. Oh, yeah. Well, they could because Laswell, the, the, the dimension of Laswell that I see uh, uh, threatens the, uh, the world of that kind of policy research. Well, that's right. Actually, we could leave it right there. That's a good final note. Anybody wants to have one more observation on that? It's possible, but I would say then um, thank you for this you. Uh, stimulating discussion. Uh, we'll look forward to a more careful read of your book, Doug. Book reviews will be coming. And you mentioned yeah. a sort of roundtable discussion in policy sciences. I'd be very interested to see what those guys that have been lined up will have to say. Me um, too. Yes. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.